Hi everybody, Kenny B here on Zombie Movies and TV. This week we're going to talk about Walking Dead Episode 10, 18 Miles Out. To start off, Shane's revelation to Rick about admitting to putting a bullet in Otis's leg and leaving him for dead. Right there, Rick should have just kept his mouth shut, waited for the opportune moment to take him out. Because somebody like that, as I stated before, you can't trust. Shane's the type of guy that he's going to go and stab you in the back if it's good for him. But of course, Rick doesn't do that. So instead, they keep driving along at that little revelation. And they take Randall to a place where they should be setting up shop. A prison. A prison is a great place to secure yourself in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Provided you have the firepower to clear out the prisoners. Now, once they get to the prison, spoiler alert, I should be able to say spoiler alert, but I haven't. I'm assuming by now you've already watched it. But Randall says that he knows Maggie, knows about the farm. Now, this is the second time I had to agree with Shane. What they should have did at that point, take one of the little knives, which we're going to get to in a minute, about the whole knife issue. Stab them in the base of the neck, twist it a few times, make sure he doesn't come back as a walker. Instead, Rick bitches out yet again, because he doesn't want to kill the guy, because it's cold-blooded murder. Never mind the fact that this guy you already wasted medical supplies on, before that, was shooting at you. So instead, Rick and Shane have a fight. Which, for Shane, it wasn't so much about killing Randall, it's about his hostility towards Rick. We already know this, because he's jealous that Rick has a wife, and his wife's pregnant, and for some reason Shane thinks the kid's his. Could it be? Maybe. Doesn't matter. It's Rick's wife. So, now Rick and Shane have his fight. The fight attracts, unfortunately, walkers. Now, I forgot to cover this, unfortunately, before the whole fight. But when Rick cuts his hand, smears it on the pole, as an experienced zombie eradication specialist, I tell you, that doesn't really work. Zombies are sight-oriented. Their sense of smell is kind of gone for the most part. They don't, they just attack things they see. And stabbing them in the head with a knife like this isn't going to kill them. It'll damage the brain and maybe deactivate certain aspects of the zombie. But for the most part, as I said repeatedly in my survival tutorials, anything but a damage to their brain cell uh, brainstem, my fault. Any, anything but damage to their brainstem is just going to slow the zombie down. You have to destroy the brainstem. That's where the zombie's locomotion comes from. But in Walking Dead, unfortunately, they don't pay attention to that. And then, okay, everybody, they're saying the two for one zombie kill. You fuckers aren't paying attention. I was in the Walking Dead chat room watching all this go through. The zombie he put the pistol in its mouth was already dead. He was just using that zombie as a means of aiming, so to speak. And putting that zombie's head in front of the other zombie's face. It wasn't a two-for-one deal. That zombie was already dead. Doesn't count. Then, we're going to go back to... Rick bailing out Shane. After Rick gets all of Randall and brings him back to the vehicle, Rick sees the two bodies of the dead police officers or prison guards, whatever they were, and realizes Shane's his buddy. He needs to save him because they were in a police department together. Bull fucking shit. Shane's already admitted to wounding a man, leave him to die. That proves he has no honor like you. So, you being the honorable one and trying to save him is fucking retarded. 
Just what you should have did if you really want to be kind. Shoot him, wound him, well, shoot him to kill. This way, you know, he doesn't get eaten by the zombies if, you know, you want to do that for friendship's sake, that's fine. But risking yourself to go back and rescue him? Fucking harebrained. And then let's talk about the other drama in this episode. Andrea and Maggie. Well, not Maggie, but uh, the other blonde. Not even worth remembering her name. Evidently, Andrea's never read Skippy's List. Skippy's List specifically says, Quiet time alone in a magazine, a loaded magazine is not what somebody's suicidal needs. Of course, translated roughly into Walking Dead, Andrea shouldn't have left her alone with enough weapons to kill herself with. But of course, Andrea's a fucking retard. She's upset because Dale took away her chance to commit suicide. She, nothing's stopping her from putting a bolt in her own head and saving everybody in trouble. But instead, she's going to whine and complain about it and latch on to Shane, thinking that Shane's this great guy. Which now leads me to something else I want to talk about. The uh, Talking Dead show. I've written many times, been trying to get, talk to AMC about letting me on the show, because as a professional, I can do this. I have an extensive resume when it comes to the killing zombies. I've been to Willamette, Colorado. Uh, there was a journalist there, an independent journalist by the name of Frank West. Took a whole shitload of pictures of me out there, laying waste to all these zombies everywhere. I just was like, Headshot! 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 Just taking them all out. And Frank has a, a metric fuck ton of photos of me doing that. Then, there's also Fiddler's Green. Been there. Saved a bunch of lives there from Necro Reanimates. Then there's my multiple trips to the Isle of Benoit. That's been recent. Uh, but I said, I'm still going over there occasionally for uh, cleaning things out in the different areas. Uh, right now, the jungle is still pretty well occupied with uh, Walking Dead, so I've been going there and trying to help out with that situation. But these people at AMC evidently don't consider me a professional enough, or I'm not a celebrity. Even though I'm on Facebook and i got a ton of people that love me, that write me, ask me for advice on things. Instead, they'd rather have people like Kevin Smith who... The only thing Kevin Smith's going to do, don't get me wrong, I love Kevin Smith's movies, but Kev, he's just going to be a ham sandwich out there when the zombies come. He's fat, he ain't going anywhere fast, probably has zero self-defense skills. He's just a walking appetizer for the zombie hordes that'll be coming. So, do if you really support me, enjoy what I do, and want, me, and want me to further my instruction ability, write to MC and tell them you want Kenny B on Talking Dead. Because the host, what's he know about zombie survival? He's from an attack of the show. He's a geek. Me, I've lived it and breathed it almost all my life. So, as I said, you want to start a Facebook campaign? Get Kenny B on AMC's Talking Dead? I'll be all for it. And I will do what I can to be the zombie killing specialist that you all know and love. I will do you proud if you get me on that show. So until next time, thank you. Take care.